and out in the further reaches of the state. Um, and I think it's going to attract other employees and other businesses to the state because of what they mean to this. Uh, that's been a somewhat debated issue about them coming to the state, but the fact is they're here. And the fact is I'm pretty sure there's probably 48 or 49 other states who would rather have them uh, than us. So we're excited about having them. Also very excited about the people who have come to Wausau this morning, the team that's traveling around the state to explain to you and to start briefing you on uh, information that's important to you and what you need to know. So without any further delay, I'd, oh, first I'd like to introduce uh, two elected officials here today, uh, Representative Bob Gulp and Representative Pat Schneider, who are from the uh, area here, Pat's right in Wausau. Bob is from south of us here, uh, but thank you for coming out and hearing about this. Thank you for supporting this. And moving right along, I'd like to introduce our, our presenter for this morning from Gilbane, m w Group, uh, Ms. Linda Graves. Thank you. Good morning. Thank you so much, Gordon. It's a beautiful morning today. Thank you all for welcoming us and greeting us so warmly. Uh, we really wanted to come to Wausau. Yes. Just because I forget things, I also want to thank Romy Wagner and the Entrepreneurial Center for having Absolutely. Us. Thank you. Thank you. We were eager to join you, and but you're thanking us that we didn't travel up last Monday. We did not order in somewhere, some say 12, some say 16. I heard 20 inches of snow. Uh, we, didn't, we didn't bring that on, uh, but it was important for us to make sure that we honored our commitment to, uh, to be here with you, and so we thank you for that. Uh, my role uh, this morning really is to guide us and walk through our presentation. This is session number 13 for us. Uh, we save the best for last, right? <laughs> and uh, we want to make sure that we finish strong. So I'm going to do my best to uh, uh, keep us on task. And we know that you all are business leaders, business owners, and that you likely have lots of appointments and lots of contracts to sign today. And we don't want to hold you from that. All right? As a matter of fact, why don't you take us with you so we can help witness you signing on the dotted line. I understand we got an early award, someone that joined us at 8.30 this morning. And so you get the Entrepreneur of the, of the Day Award uh, for being here early. I think in sales school they say you want to show up and show up early. So we will applaud you for that. And sorry if we may have kept you waiting. So uh, we will uh, be joined together by our team. Uh, Yella Trask and Alan Ware. Yella is with the Wisconsin Economic Development Corporation. She'll walk us through uh, certainly the state's commitment as well as some opportunities on the public infrastructure, sewer main, water main, lots of great opportunities that are right in front of us for those that are uh, in the room that work in the um, road work, uh, sewer space, underground utilities, etc. Uh, Alan and I will provide an overview of the vertical construction, uh, the schedule, what lies ahead, the sort of big picture plans that are available as we know it today. Uh, certainly on behalf of our client Foxconn, we will share with you the information so that you can understand how to begin to plan and set your course forward. We'll share some information around the Wisconsin First Commitment. You may have uh, heard some dialogue around that in the marketplace. We want to give you some details so that you can determine where you may fit uh, within that, that, that infrastructure. And then save time for questions uh, at the end. So hopefully we will answer your questions along the way, but if you might have a question or two at the end, we'll take as many of those as possible. So that being said, uh, share with you uh, our team's commitment uh, throughout our organizations, our commitment to caring and our commitment to safety. So uh, many of you may be familiar with this facility we just walked in uh, about a half an hour ago. But in the event, uh, in the unlikely event of an emergency, we need to evacuate this space. I want to uh, suggest that you uh, exit out the front doors and gather uh, in the parking lot ahead. We will ask our team to just take a quick roll call. Uh, we want to make sure that we're taking care of you while you are here with us just as we do for everyone that works on our job site and in our offices. We want everyone to go back home safe as they join with us. Uh, do we have anyone in the room that's worked on a, um, locally on a Gilbane project? Well, not locally, in Milwaukee. In Milwaukee, great. And so locally being in the state of Wisconsin, and so you 
uh, uh, know of our commitment around safety and our expectations, we do ask all of our partners to come prepared with a defined safety plan. And so our commitment to caring is baked within our commitment to safety. So with that, we're going to uh, invite Yella to come and uh, walk us through some of um, the uh, topics that I mentioned. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for being here. And as Linda said, um, we're really excited to be here, and we're really excited that this is 13 or 14 sessions. We've got Eau Claire this afternoon. Uh, so uh, before I get into uh, the presentation, uh, I wanted to thank um, a few folks who made this possible, uh, starting really with the Synergy Group. Um, when Gilbane was announced as the Foxconn's uh, general contract team, MNW, uh, we reached out, WBC reached out to our regional partners, and literally in 48 hours, we had 14 sessions scheduled uh, within a two-week period. And that really requires a lot of teamwork, so I really want to thank them for this. I want to say, thank the Entrepreneurial Education Center. I want to thank the elected officials that are here. And I'd be remiss if I didn't thank Foxconn as well uh, for committing to just not only selecting Wisconsin, I mean, there were other states that were higher bidders in this, uh, but uh, to participate in this type of information session roadshow. Um, because of the nature of this project, and we'll get into, um, into that, into some of the details, uh, we're really needing to approach this differently. Uh, there hasn't been a project of this scale um, not just not in Wisconsin, but in the country. Uh, so getting a team together to get out there, reach out to the state, and really make it tangible on how you can engage above and beyond outside of Southeast Wisconsin. Uh, so they committed to doing that with us uh, as part of this uh, process, and we want to thank them for that. Uh, so a little bit about my role, uh, I, as I said, I am with WBC. Um, I was brought on, uh, the position was created uh, as part of the Foxconn legislation uh, to really focus on connecting our supply chain to the Foxconn opportunity. So as Gordon said, um, Foxconn's going to have a, a, a few different uh, impacts uh, to the state. There's going to be direct impact for some of you who are going to be directly involved with the project. There's going to be indirect impact, not just as far as talent, because we're hearing a lot of that well before Foxconn came on the scene, the talent challenges and pressures. But there's going to be supply chain impact as well. So for suppliers who have direct opportunities with Foxconn, it's certainly going to open up more opportunities for other suppliers to step in and fill some, some voids. Uh, so it's an important role, um, and part of that is um, also working very closely with Foxconn to better understand what they need. Uh, so I'll touch on that in my presentation as well. Uh, but this is an all-hands-on-deck effort, uh, so some of the information I'm going to be sharing um, I am not directly responsible for, um, but we have a team uh, from uh, representing from Department of Transportation that is uh, responsible for all the road construction, a team from Mount Pleasant, Racine County, Department of Workforce Development, uh, and then of course uh, DNR, and of course our Department of Administration is pulling all of our teams together uh, to support the public side of the, of the effort. So as I said, I'll be getting into some information that I may not have um, answers to, but I know who to go to to get those answers. So a little bit about the project. Some of these numbers are probably all too familiar. Um, when the contract was uh, agreement was signed with WEDC back in November, some of the highlights of that agreement are the commitment uh, from Foxconn to create 13,000 jobs when the project is fully operational. And that's how the, the credits are, are tied to this, is the pay as you grow. Uh, so over the course of the, the project, it's 13,000 jobs. 10,000, uh, uh, that's above and beyond the 13,000. 10,000 will be in construction, and the MW Gilbane team will talk a little bit about uh, how that will come together and some of the gap analysis that we need to do to really understand where those jobs need to be fit, uh, filled. Um, the, uh, the focus of today's uh, discussion will be on Area 1 and Phase 1 of Area 1. Uh, so there's a lot of phases to this project, as you can imagine. It's, it's pretty, pretty significant. Um, so Area 2, Area 3 are part of the overall zone that was created, and 
Uh, so that's opportunity for expansion. Uh, so um, it'll be really interesting to see kind of how those numbers break out into phase one and give you the magnitude of what we're talking about. The 1.4 billion annually is um, uh, the, the number that uh, Foxconn has indicated that they are looking to spend with Wisconsin-based suppliers. So that's what I'll uh, touch on a little bit further into the presentation as far as what we anticipate on the supply chain side. To give that some perspective, Oshkosh is a large manufacturer in Wisconsin. Uh, they spend about 300 million with Wisconsin suppliers across the state four times as much. Uh, so um, opportunity, I guess, is the best way to put it. <clears throat> Public infrastructure bid process. Uh, so we created this website back in January uh, when uh, it was very, very clear uh, since the contract agreement was put together in November, there was a gap for information. Uh, black calls coming in, uh, still coming in. I get somewhere in the neighborhood of five to six calls a day, uh, emails a day, asking about information about Fox Hunt. So we created this site uh, that uh, allows you to link to specific information related to the project. Right across the top, um, and before I get too far into uh, describing what's in the website, uh, we'd love for you to register on wisconsindali.wi.gov. Um, we're going to walk you through specific areas for registration, but one in particular is the newsletter that's put out every two weeks. Uh, so if you go to wisconsindali.wi.gov, straight across the top, uh, you'll see news, and if you click on that, you can uh, sign up to our newsletter. The other important um, uh, uh, kind of sections of the site, um, there is supply chain, um, which we'll chat a little bit about, uh, but construction is kind of where it's at uh, for today's presentation. So there are several uh, sections um, within construction, uh, one of which is the science and technology part. This presentation is available for download, uh, so um, there's a lot of links in there, so I just want to make sure to assure you that the presentation is available and all those links and phone numbers and ways to connect with us are in this presentation. And that's under the science and technology part. The area that's highlighted is the public construction information sign up, so if you have services, specific to the public side of the project. You can also raise your hand and say, hey, I want to hear about roads or sewer mains, and we'll be sure to get information out to you. So water main, sewer main, demolition. Uh, to break out kind of uh, how the responsibility falls into this uh, part of the project, the water main is the responsibility of the city of Racine. Uh, there is a phone number there for pre-qualification and to request these, those pre-qual forms. Uh, just spoke with some of their folks and uh, they intend to follow uh, their typical bid process uh, where there's notifications uh, through reports uh, for contractors that are in this field. Um, what we're going to be doing is also including those in emails that we're going to be sending out. So a bit, as bids are released that are related to the water main or sewer main, we'll be sure to be communicating those through the um, newsletter. Um, if you sign up, you will get notifications. I think we're somewhere in the neighborhood, I guess as of yesterday, uh, 3,500 folks have already signed up to receive information. Um, obviously, with the information sessions, we've got a huge uptick in, in sign-ups, uh, so look forward to staying connected that way. Um, we're also going to be looking at um, doing pre-bid meetings, uh, so if a bid is released, uh, conducting meetings to break this down and help, and help explain what's, uh, what's in the bid. So stay tuned on those as well. Um, I believe there will be one coming up May 17th is the date that I heard as of yesterday, but the newsletter will keep you posted if that date is and ends up being uh, the one we're going to go with. Um, important to uh, two last points to make here, and they carry through the entire public side of um, the project. Uh, one, we're going to be asking for contractors to submit a utilization plan, and that's really to show us uh, how uh, 
contractors, subcontractors are looking to work with our minority groups or disadvantaged businesses, uh, bringing in the underemployed. We really need to go above and beyond um, the way of doing things in the past. Um, I would say even before Foxconn came aboard, um, it, things have to, to be done differently when you're looking at a 2.9% unemployment rate. Uh, so we are going to be asking for a utilization plan, but it's really important from a state perspective, anything related to public side, um, it is state law um, that the bid be awarded to the lowest um, but most competent, um, competent provider. Uh, so that is different than what is over on the private side or building side of the construction project, which MW building will speak to. Uh, so good news that this presentation is available on the website because this is a really complicated road construction map. The um, headline on this is lots of road construction. Uh, so 14, um, I estimated at this point around 14 packages of uh, construction, road construction work that is related to the Foxconn project. Uh, so we are expecting to have a release May 8th. Uh, that is for road construction, uh, so stay tuned. Um, that will follow the typical channels that DOT has and plus through, uh, as I said, the newsletter. Uh, so that, I, yeah, rather than sitting here and kind of walking you through um, all of the construction that will be and is already underway, um, just as a point of reference, this is the area that um, I highlighted in the earlier slide. Um, and as you can imagine, uh, it's a several year project. Some of those roads are going from two lanes to six. So lots of, lots of activity. I think last I had heard from Foxconn is that uh, they're anticipating on having around 400 trucks a day pulling out of the facility. Uh, so um, we need to really beef up the infrastructure. So um, opportunities, again, contracts are awarded to the lowest competent responsible contractor. There are a couple links here uh, to get a better understanding of how the DOT bid process works. Uh, but typically, highway construction bid letting occurs second Tuesday of each month. Anything specific to some of the roads, surrounding roads, uh, we'll be looking to communicate that through DOT channels as well as through uh, the newsletter. But contractor checklist of what's expected for bidder approval uh, is available at that link there that is, again, uh, in the presentation, as well as the pre-qualification policy, just so you can get a sense of what is required from a pre-qual standpoint for anything related to road construction. Um, advertising happens typically about five weeks prior to a bid being uh, let. Um, and the letting is really to let um, bidders know who's the lowest um, uh, lowest bidder, uh, and then awards are typically made about a couple weeks after that. Um, and bids are submitted through their standard bid process. So DOT has a pretty rigorous process. We're going to be leveraging that at www.bidx.com, um, and. There's more information. I mean, they, they even get down to the time frame of the day as to when they're going to be announcing floods. Any questions? Um, there's a dedicated, so above and beyond wisconvalley.wi.gov, where all these links are, there is a dedicated section on the DOT site that is all things Foxconn and that um, provides more timely updates um, on the road construction project and more information can be had at wisconsin.gov. But if there's anything specific, we do have a project team that's dedicated to this project. If you have any questions, just see me after, and I'll be happy to, um, to forward those to the right folks on the team. So the point I made around uh, workforce, and we'll hear it a lot um, throughout the presentation, is uh, opportunity, opportunity for us to do things differently, opportunity for us to really activate some of the programs that uh, the teams across the board, um, regionally, at the local level, I mean, there's a talent event uh, summit, right, in a couple, oops, sorry, uh, a couple of, oh, I can do it. it's just a uh, window to do summary, oops, okay. 
Um, uh, so those, um, the, the, the efforts and the, the identification of resources and support, um, as I indicated, have been well underway before Foxconn came along. Uh, but to ensure that we're looking at creatively pulling in as much as the state as a whole is realizing 2.9% unemployment, there are pockets in the state that are at higher levels. So what do we need to do to bring in the underemployed? And we conducted a resource there, just to give you an example uh, of some of those efforts, uh, about uh, three weeks ago, and it was a construction resource fair. And this wasn't a typical job fair. The typical job fair assumes you're coming in with your resume or your application and there's companies that are gonna be looking to hire you and you've got it all more or less figured out from a skill standpoint. The resource fair was really looking at having our resources. There were about 30 to 40 vendors from our tech colleges to our other support programs that were really helping put a community of over 300, I think it was like 300 to 400 mm -hmm. individuals who were brought in, transportation was provided to make sure that folks could be there. That's looking at some of the basic levels of, of needing to be even a participant in the workforce. Do you have a valid license, driver's license? Um, are you skilled at what we're going to be looking for? Uh, so those are efforts that are well underway. An advisory committee has been created uh, to make sure that we're bringing in all the resources from our tech colleges to our public uh, and, and private side uh, to weigh in on what we could be doing to help support um, Foxconn. Uh, and to help support our other manufacturers because of the pressures that Foxconn's going to create on some of the job opportunities. Um, but it's a great opportunity because it really helps us look at what could the future look like. And we hear from Foxconn that they're not really sure what that skill's going to look like three years from now. That could be, you know, th there could be some fear in that, but it's super exciting because we're creating jobs of the future, literally. Um, so what could we be doing to move some of the skilled workforce as it is today into those jobs in the future to make room then for some of the um, underemployed into the jobs that are being made available. So to that end, um, there's a whole host of programs, but these are just the three or so that I um, wanted to highlight. This Job Center of Wisconsin's a website um, that's been around for uh, quite a few years. Uh, lists all jobs that are available. It also allows you as employers to list any uh, jobs you're looking to fill on the site. Uh, apprenticeship training support, uh, and then the Wisconsin Fast Forward program, which can provide training programs. Uh, again, there is a representative that is all things workforce for Foxconn. Any questions that um, might be of particular to that, see me after. Uh, in one of the sessions, uh, one of the gentlemen asked uh, would some of the grants be available, not just to tech colleges and to the public side of, of our education system, but also they were a private business that provided welding training. And absolutely, we have programs that uh, can support that as well. So supply chain, uh, supply chain marketplace, um, as I said, was If you go across the top supply chain, you click over to the supply chain marketplace. This is a statewide effort um, that, again, well before Foxconn became a reality, uh, pulled our resources together to create a directory of suppliers that buyers like yourself or suppliers, uh, if you have a new RFP, you're looking to expand your supply chain base. Um, we're asking companies to fill out a profile, enter their information. We're somewhere in the neighborhood of 1,500 suppliers. That certainly isn't all the suppliers in our supply chain. But one of the reasons um, that Foxconn selected Wisconsin uh, was because they felt pretty confident that they could find suppliers in Wisconsin that could meet their needs. They certainly will be needing to bring over some of their own proprietary service, uh, uh, um, not just materials in some cases, uh, but the processes are very proprietary to them. I think they hold somewhere in the neighborhood of 80,000 uh, patents uh, in how they do what they do. Uh, so they're, um, you know, I'm not here to say that 100% uh, of everything they're looking to do is going to be done by Wisconsin suppliers, 
But 1.4 billion, that's, that's still a pretty big pie for Wisconsin suppliers to participate in. And the reason I'm getting a little more into detail of this is because I'm getting a lot of calls and the questions are, who are they bringing over and why aren't they buying from Wisconsin? And the answer to the question is we don't know exactly, but we do know that certain tier one services that they need, they've created themselves. And there may only be one or two companies in the world that provide what Foxconn has to build. As we know, may not know, I mean, they are the primary supplier to Apple, to a lot of what we use every day. The pressures to deliver to market are those we as consumers place on our brands, on Apple, on Shark TV, on, that has to then funnel through to Foxconn. So when they're looking to build something here in Wisconsin, they're committed to building a Wisconsin company with Wisconsin suppliers, but recognize that certain things that help them go to market are going to be um, probably not going to make sense for a supplier to get into if there's only one or two suppliers in the world that do what they do. So that wouldn't be a necessarily good opportunity to expand market if there's only two companies in the world that do what they do. Uh, so I'm getting a little into detail on this because the volume of calls that I get asking these questions is, like I said, pretty high, uh, so I want to be able to explain kind of how we're breaking this down. Good news is they have indicated that they want to and they have every intention of using the supply chain marketplace to help them with their initial set of bedding so that they know where to go for plastic injection molding, for tool and dye, for some of the things we know that Wisconsin can provide to their supply chain. Working very closely uh, with their team on better understanding the three questions that everyone's asking is, what do they need, when do they need it, and how much, right? Because there's going to be a big question of capacity considering how much they're going to be producing. So as a recap, WisconsinValley.wi.gov uh, is the website. Lots of great information there. Opportunity to sign up. Just to clarify, because I know that Linda and Alan are going to speak to some of this too, please sign up for the newsletter for all things Fox Times a general roll-up every two weeks. That's where the public infrastructure information will also be coming through. Um, please also sign up uh, for the Gilbane site. Theirs is the construction-specific site. You'll want to create a profile there. We can share... Um, that, you know, email as far as sending out general information, but they have a certain set of data that they need to pull together for all things construction. So just because you sign up on the Wisconsin Valley News, that's just, you're just giving us your email. You're not giving us um, the set of data they need. So sign up with uh, Gilbane for the construction related activity and then supply chain if you are a supplier for ongoing once the facility is up and running for assembly and manufacturing. Uh, so apologize, there's three sites, but we don't want to get into data sharing and have to deal with permissions from all of you on some information that's requested. Uh, so keep those three links in mind. Okay? So I'm going to turn it over to Adam. Thanks. Thank you all. Thanks, uh, Linda. Uh, so again, Alan Ware. I'm with the Linda View Urbane JB. Uh, I'm one of the principals uh, on the JB. And, uh, this is like our 13. So as we go through this, we're going to try to answer, like everybody else said, a lot of the questions we've been hearing to make sure we address those. We know they're going to be questions. We've been through this a few times. Uh, but also, we're going to take all the questions you have at the end here. So we'll, we'll stay here and answer your questions to the best of our ability. And I think we'll be able to answer most of them. Uh, come up with. At least give an answer or say we don't have an answer. <laughs> um, a little bit about MW and Gilbane. Uh, Gilbane is a very long-term company. Uh, been around the U.S. for a very long time. Uh, the 5B annual revenue is probably a little low now. It's probably up around seven. Uh, as you can see, since 1873, they do a lot of work here in Wisconsin. They're number one uh, Milwaukee-based construction firm as far as volume they do. Uh, they just completed Northwest Mutual Office downtown, over a million dollars, um, and implemented a lot of these strategies that you're hearing about as far as uh, local hires and developing uh, small minority business. All that was done there very well. Uh, MW is another 
long-term company, not quite as long, uh, but MW is more the advanced technology side of it. So MW builds factories for semiconductor companies around the world, so clean them. And what's happening with uh, Foxconn is they actually have a clean factory floor. So we actually circulate air inside their manufacturing and send it through health filters to get out all the contaminants and let them do their manufacturing process because the dust or anything else that may be out there impacts their productivity and impacts their, their final product. So that's one reason that the MW is, is, uh, is JV here with, with the domain, bringing in that piece of expertise. Uh, just out of curiosity, um, any people in the room here are part of uh, like uh, soils or anything with the, the horizontal construction? Anybody? You? Uh, what about structure? Concrete, steel, roofing, architectural, a few more. Uh, MEP inside, a mechanical, electrical process. Okay, so that's a pretty good mixture of, of a little bit of everything in here. And that's what we've seen as we've gone around and talked about this project. So here's the uh, the high level, uh, Foscon, obviously up at the uh, top here. Uh, they have two developments, uh, development agreements that they sign that show their requirements as far as executing the project and, and what they're required to do for the state and the county. Uh, what they've done is they've gone out and hired uh, us, Gilbane and W, to be pre-construction management. The engineering side, and I know there's a lot of people in here who will say, how do I talk to the architect to get my understand the specs or influence the specs. All of that's done on the Jacob side. Uh, I would still tell you that the best way to influence that right now is to still go to the website, sign up. We're, as the instructor, we're doing pre-construction with, with Jacobs. We meet with them. We look at what's being designed, what specs are being put in there. Um, we refer back to our database. If we think there's things out there that could be good alternatives or local or a better, cheaper, uh, more sustainable way of doing it. So we'll go back and review that. But Jacobs is the designer here, a great instructor. Um, so if you have the spec question, that's really the answer right now. Uh, as far as down here, we're going to go out and it's going to be a huge mixture. None of these have been hired. In fact, maybe tonight we will award our first contract. But there's not been a single contract awarded yet. We went out with uh, bid number one about two weeks ago, and that was for MassX, for the Earth movie. So that was the first package out. Um, that was the only one that we designed fully. So no one has missed the train. Uh, it hasn't taken off yet. Uh, I think tonight we've done review. Uh, I think we're ready to make the recommendation on the first award, but that's the, the real communication here. It's going to be hundreds of contractors. When I talked to my team, even as late as yesterday, uh, we're probably going to be around 400 packages that we'll put out for phase one. Now, some of those are going to be hundreds of millions. Some of them are going to be several hundred thousand and everywhere in between. So I'll talk more about that as we go through and let you better understand the timeline of how those packages are come out. This is, uh, I'm not going to go through all this. This just gives you a good idea of the type of data <coughs> find on the website. So when you go to the website and sign up, one of the first things I do is go in and sign up myself. And so I get the emails, I know how it works, I get the updates. Uh, what you'll find on the website is a lot of stuff about phase one and area one, what's happening, what does it look like, some sketches and drawings like the, the buildings from the outside. You're going to find more detail about timing and logistics and preparation. You're going to find more detail about the vertical construction, uh, specifically when does uh, concrete start, foundations, when do we start putting up steel, when is the roofing contracts going to be left. And then you're going to get more information about the workforce and capacity and size of some of those different. So you'll have a better idea of where you might fit in. Again, talking about uh, phase one and area one. So there are two adjacent areas here that are also going to be developments. Uh, these are outside of what we're talking about today but you can just get an idea uh, of this area here. And we've heard up to 20 million square feet. That 20 million is just right here. That's not including area two or area three. Um, I can tell you that there's about 150,000 tons of steel that we've done off the preliminary programming. And as, as an example, the, uh, the Buck Stadium in downtown Milwaukee is about 10,000 tons of steel. So we're talking 
150,000 versus 10,000 for the new arena. That gives you some side, some idea of the scale we're talking about. Here's a uh, <coughs> drawing of what we're looking at. This is actually a glass plant. Uh, so the glass plant feeds in the green spine, carries the glass to the first processes of these buildings, to the next processes of these buildings, down to the last process here. And at the end, this is the assembly test. So after the sand is poured in here, it goes through this process, the TVs are shipped out here. So this is, we talk about one-stop shop for making TVs. This is uh, why it's so big, why there's so much infrastructure there. Let's make it work. Uh, the phase one is, is really this portion, the north side. So this is all everyone we talked about on the map. This is phase one here, the north side. Phase two would be the southern half that would come later. So everything we're talking about today, as far as schedule and opportunity, is really about this phase one. Uh, this is the actual mass X grading plan that went out to the bidders two weeks ago that, that are getting ready to award. And uh, I can tell you, after looking at the bids, uh, we're going to see a cross-section of firms who are going to receive work from across the state, not just around seeing or Mount St. Pleasant. You're going to see awards that cover uh, just about all of the state. So uh, that'll be coming up, but the, the size of this required it to be almost a consortium of companies that went in together to bid this just because of all the work required. So when we looked at the bids, and this was this was consistent with every bidder, it's typically a prime, it's a prime of teams and other companies tied in. So uh, it's going to be a very positive thing when we make the first award, and we'll report to announcing that uh, this week. Uh, and just a little bit of this is about three meeting cubic yards of dirt we're talking about. It's generally high here in the center, and we're moving dirt to the left, and the right, or to the east, and the west. Uh, so that's the mass X. A little bit of the schedule. So uh, as we've worked with Boscom, um, they're still finalizing exactly what that building structure looks like on the inside. We've got kind of a box. We have enough of, a, of an idea that we're able to uh, define where the foundations are going to be, uh, which allows us to do the mass X design. But we don't actually know yet exactly that size and where the four corners of every building is. That's still being done. And so when we say uh, programming, we're still doing programming. We're still going to be doing programming probably through the middle of this year. And that's to really find actually what the inside that area one of those buildings actually look like. Because they're, they're still developing the process. Uh, we're actually working with them overseas right now in China, building part of the facility that this facility is going to be based off of. And even in that facility, new technology is being updated. And as new technology is update, updated, they try some of it. Some of it doesn't work so well, so they keep trying new technologies. And we're still finalizing that interior. But that should be done by the middle of this year. Um, as far as the site work, uh, we're going to break ground at the end of this week, um, early next week, start mobilizing this week probably. Uh, and we'll actually start moving here in the next couple weeks after that, assuming it's uh, dry enough out there. After the snow that. Uh, and then as we get into early 2019, that's when we're going to start doing the concrete foundations. So that's when we'll start placing the first concrete on these pads out here. So again, the message is if you're um, the facility, the structure, architectural, mechanical, electrical, process, fire, anything that goes in there, you won't start seeing those packages until the very end of this year. It's long to eat, something we've got to work. As I said, uh, steel, you don't get on the phone and order 150,000 tons of steel and it's going to be there next week. We have to place those orders several months in advance. So we'll be placing those orders way out in some of the long to eat MVP. But the rest of the interior will be in Q1 probably next year before you start seeing those packages. And again, the best way to stay on track with what the timing is is sign up to the website and keep an eye on it. And it actually pushes out emails to give you an idea of the bidding schedule as well as we know it. And obviously, we'll, we'll plan out about six months. 
so we'll give you six months of visibility. And as the time gets closer and closer, we'll refine that. Uh, probably within three months or a month, we'll know exactly what's going to be 9 o'clock on Tuesday that the bids are going to be, or the RFPs are going to come out, and they're going to be due two weeks later at 5 p.m. local time. It'll get that refined as we get closer to the bid dates. Let Linda talk about this. Sure, certainly um, uh, it, it doesn't go without saying uh, the investment that has been made uh, here in the state of Wisconsin has been significant, <coughs> and specifically through the village of Mount Pleasant. Uh, certainly for us to be able to deliver uh, what our client expects in terms of advanced manufacturing uh, will take a number of, uh, of companies all in, companies and workers. So we do have a strong commitment to a Wisconsin first inclusion strategy. I want to share with you at a high level what that means and perhaps what that may mean for you. Uh, the Gilbane m and will extend all best and good faith efforts to ensure a process that is transparent, that we are inclusive, that we have a procurement and construction process that leads to growth in capacity for both a business and a workforce perspective. Along those lines, we have to establish some benchmarks so that we can measure our progress. From a business standpoint, we endeavor to provide direct and indirect contracts to businesses that are based in Wisconsin. And what do we mean when we said based in Wisconsin? So for businesses that have been operational and providing operational delivery services from a location in Wisconsin for a minimum of one calendar year and register with the Wisconsin Department of Revenue prior to bid submission. Again, operational delivery. That means that you are based in a location here, you're paying taxes, you're hiring local workers, and you're delivering services, not just hosting a warehouse in the state of Wisconsin, but operational delivery and services from a Wisconsin location for a minimum of one calendar year. So 60% of those contracts, direct and indirect, to contractors, suppliers, vendors, and professional services firms within Wisconsin. It doesn't end there. We have a commitment of 10% of those contracts to be awarded to Racine County-based businesses to acknowledge the investment by Racine County and the village of Mount Pleasant. So a very smart partnering strategy will not only include Wisconsin-based businesses, but those firms that are located in Racine County. We want to demonstrate economic inclusion. So we set a target of 10% of a combined 10% of contracts to firms that hold a certification as a minority-owned, woman-owned, veteran-owned or other disadvantaged business enterprise. Again, we're looking for inclusion throughout your plan as you come to the table to present your strategy for placing Wisconsin first. When we look at it from a workforce standpoint, we want to ensure that we are providing maximum opportunities for Wisconsin residents. 70% of the job hours will be performed by Wisconsin residents. And all efforts to identify qualified individuals that reside in Racine County, 10% of those job hours. We want to make sure that we also have diversity and inclusion within the workforce. Again, maximizing those opportunities with a combined 10% of those job hours to perform by people of color, women, and veterans. How will we measure this? How will we know what your plan is? When you come to the table as a part of your partnering strategy, as Alan mentioned, as Yellen mentioned, we're looking for utilization. We want to understand your plans. I can tell you firsthand, uh, in our first uh, bid release, we had two bid packages. And to understand and, and see firsthand how the companies came to the table with their Wisconsin First Inclusion Plan. First out of the gate, walking us through, very thoughtful, how we look to partner. So if you, you've thought about partnering as a part of your strategy in the past, now is the time to put that work into execution. Identify that scope of work where you're strong. You may have some gaps. Want to look to see how you will come to the table, 
both with a, with a partnering strategy, as well as how you will subcontract, or perhaps you are a smaller business and you want to have a, a piece of this, work with your prime contractors and pro provide an inclusion plan that demonstrates your best and good faith efforts to being inclusive within those categories that we've identified as a priority. Right out of the gate, those conversations are being had. We are appreciative in knowing that you, like us, have a commitment to placing Wisconsin first. So we look forward to learning more about how you may be thinking about your partnering strategy and coming to the table. Certainly a way that we look at identifying it is through an informed gap analysis. So when we look at opportunities of area one, phase one, it's enormous work. So we've got to understand where those uh, larger areas of performance are. So we, we will incorporate strategies like a gap analysis. I'll, I'll provide you with an, with an example. On our recent project that Alan mentioned, the Northwestern Mutual Tower and Commons, we knew right away, based on the program that the client put in front of us, that we were to build a million square feet. We knew that by an assessment within the programming, that we would need to deliver 32 stories of a curtain wall system and structural steel. So iron workers and uh, glass and glazing were going to be our largest um, uh, and greatest need from an employment standpoint. We also knew by performing that gap analysis together with our trade partners that we had a, a deficiency in the number of iron workers that would be available based on the amount of work that's in the market at the time. And then the glass and glazing, so a 32-story tower, 2,200 panels needed to be produced. We worked together to, uh, with our prime contractor, Vincent Industries out of Portland, and Dewey Metals, a local small business, they partnered to bring a solution where we established an off-site prefabrication facility within uh, the A.O. Smith, former A.O. Smith manufacturing facility. With the glass and glazing trade, we established a category, a workforce category, that would allow us to create a pre-apprenticeship uh, helper category where we could fabricate those 2,200 panels off-site, truck them to the job site just in time for them to be installed. So every one of those glass and glazing, every one of those glass panels were performed by local residents that were either unemployed or underemployed. As a result of this skill, they were able then to go into the manufacturing space, work on smaller manufacturing opportunities, some eventually went to work with our prime contractor and our full-time employees. Again, they can now take that skill and apply it to other industries and other opportunities. It's that type of a gap analysis that we will perform on certain aspects of this work where we know the greatest labor needs will be. As an example, in terms of how we predict where our needs are and how cash flow is predicted, workforce needs are predicted. It is, a, it is a science. We don't just get in a room and decide you know, where we're going to have the greatest need. You project your schedule. You project your manpower utilization plans. We will work collectively with you in terms of being able to predict where those labor needs might be. There may be some other areas as, as this opportunity grows and the programming is defined. So please get ready. Be attentive to the schedule and prepare yourselves. I guess if we want, I want to leave you with something uh, we often hear. Uh, the bid dates are announced, the bid releases come out, and then the clock starts ticking. We're here early. We want you to be aware of it early. As you begin to think about in your business plan going forward, that there may be a piece of the pie. Uh, on out into Q3, Q4 this year, and into 2019, it's now time for you to start planning that so that when the bid release happens, we're not caught off guard and there's adequate planning. Because of course, putting together pricing, schedules, manpower, cash flow, that can all happen pretty fast, as you all are well aware in your business. We want to make sure we're providing adequate notice. Alan, anything else you want to add to that? Yeah, I'll, I'll build on a little bit. Okay. I'm going to go back to that point we um, to talk about. So when we go through and do the, the breakout and we start looking at the packages that we're going to size, we're going to intentionally size some of those packages for smaller business. We're 
we're going to intentionally size some of the packages for GC firms. So we'll have some GC uh, general contractor opportunities out there. So we look at these buildings. I mean, these are talk about 20 million square feet here on the other. Uh, the phase one is about half of that. Uh, when you look at these buildings, these buildings are several million square feet each. So when we divide these buildings up, this isn't going to be, we're not going to award a, a still corrected contract for everything. We will order, we will probably award 15 to 20 still correction contracts. And we'll put them in quadrants and have them all working on different sections of the building. When we get to MEP, we're going to take these buildings in quadrants or something even smaller, and we will bid out the mechanical electrical process or the interior bid up as separate packages and manage that. On the peripheral, there's going to be some buildings that are going to be warehouses. In fact, up here, if you want to show, there's a whole office complex with parking structures, probably uh, nice offices up here. We may package that as a separate build build to a GC. We'll do the, get the design done and get that out as a lump sum to a GC to hire their own trades on that work. So uh, the point is, regardless of what you're in after, regardless of the size of your company, uh, there's going to be opportunities for everybody across the whole spectrum. Uh, the way we're going to do that, uh, this is a very uh, structured, call it structured and disciplined process. Uh, and we followed this to the T with the first two bid packages that came out. I talked about the mass X. The other bid package that came out was for soils inspection. So we hire a separate uh, kind of inspection uh, survey firm separate from the earth mover. So we have you know, keep them separate so we can keep the testing done and make sure we're getting the product across time that we actually bet out and award. Uh, the other pieces of that package are going to include some, uh, some office trailers. We'll go out for security, fencing, uh, temp water, you know, power, uh, bottled water, food services, nurse services, you know, office interior. A lot of packages are going to be coming out just to get the infrastructure for the site up and running and sustainable while we do all the surf work and move into vertical construction. So we, we talked about the bid packaging strategy. Uh, this is the information sessions that we're doing now. Uh, like I said, this is the 13th one, but uh, another one this afternoon. Uh, and there'll probably be a few stragglers that we'll do after that as we, as we come on. Uh, outreach and engagement, we've had a, a session at the uh, local community college uh, there in the scene, and we probably had 150 uh, firms that were interested in mass X and soil testing, so we had big bribes. We had some small companies. Uh, we briefed them on the details of the bid packages. Then we set up a, a matchmaking process where we had the primes at certain tables with a, a color card that allowed the smaller firms to go up there and talk to them and start talking about how they could engage with the larger firms and be part of that, that venture with them how they could team up. And then you have smaller companies that team together on their own to see how they could team up and get together. So we'll do that for the patches to go out. We'll hold these sessions. Uh, so the information sessions followed by outreach engagement, uh, notifications to bid, and then we go through and do the, the pre-bid and continue to do matchmaking as we talk to the bidders to see small ones and big ones that might not have paired up. We'll again offer the opportunity for those guys to talk. Uh, then we'll have bids submitted. Uh, we we had the bids submitted, I think, Monday evening this week. And we immediately, starting Tuesday morning, we're having uh, sessions with them to clarify. Because not everything comes in understanding what we meant or what they meant. So we went through that session with every bidder. Um, then we went through and had actually another one with them again. I lost the phone calls, went back and forth, refinement, understanding. Uh, again, there's, there's alternate. A lot of the bidders out there said, okay, you required this amount of compaction, or you wanted to put the topsoil over here, or you wanted, here's a better idea for you to serve. So we also have to evaluate all the different alternatives that are included in the bids and evaluate those and make sure we understand those. So again, as you're getting bids and you have a better way of doing it, feel free to offer the alternates. We do look at those. We do actually vet them and take them up for uh, approval for visibility to the possible. Um, then we have our uh, shortlist bidders. We do the final analysis through the award. Like I said, uh, hopefully uh, late this evening or early tomorrow. We will have a decision on the first one. Uh, when you get the form, uh, it will come in. Well, it's not actually a form. There's a, 
<coughs> software program called IBID Pro, which you go into. It includes this agenda. These are all the different sections you look at. Uh, so it's going to give you information on the uh, confidentiality agreement, which you have to sign before we can give you access to some of the bid documents and drawings. Uh, it will show details of the project schedule. Uh, it's going to talk about the rules and general scope of work. Uh, it's going to talk about the inclusion plan for us. And I can tell you that some of the bidders went, went beyond what we thought they would do. They actually presented four charts which identify, in some cases, 15 to 20 different firms that made up their bid and identified those firms as local Wisconsin, local C, <coughs> population of local workers they would hire, um, if they were minority status, what the minority status was, all this on an overall org chart. So you get a very good picture of what they're presenting and how it ties in Wisconsin first and all those goals that we talked about earlier. And besides that, some of the bidders would actually give us a map that we didn't have to do. They proactively did a map. So here's all the different companies around the state of Wisconsin that is part of our bid and the number of people. So those are the kind of things we're getting that we didn't even actually ask for. We asked for the data, but they're going above and beyond in a lot of cases to give us a very good visual. Um, other things we're asking for is we're going to ask for cash flow and power projection. So what we do is we start taking all these bids up. Uh, we start consolidating the cash flow consolidating the manpower so we have a better view to show FOSCON of here's the labor force that's going to be on site all the time. Here's the cash flow that we're expecting. So this is what we're going to be invoicing. I'll show you in just a minute some of the terms, uh, very standard terms for the project that you see. Uh, but all these are, are very key for us. When we talk about manpower, some of the projections we've done just internally, and it depends on how fast they build or how, how balanced they spread it out. But if they're really aggressive, we can see that 10,000 actual peak on site at one time. During the height of MEP, we could get up to 10,000 workers on site. Now, I don't care how big your site is, if you have 10,000 people trying to work there, that gets very crowded. And you have a lot of logistical problems, you have efficiency problems. So the other thing we're doing is we are going to be pushing and working with Jacobs to actually design this facility so that we can prefabricate as much as possible off-site. So there's going to be facilities around the state that are going to be set up to be clean room related. Some of these facilities could be clean rooms themselves, manufactured components to go inside the clean room of um, But we see this being done where we put together a uh, pipe. So put together the, the pipe racks, put the pipes in the racks, go ahead and join them all together, tie in the electrical, uh, even fire systems on that rack, and this could be up to a standard uh, long bed that you see on the highway. So that big, all put together, all sectioned out, all designed like that. Truck them into the site, put them in position, lift them up, hold them up, connect them together. So instead of having 10,000 people on site, maybe we can get down to seven, 8,000 people on site. We've got another three or 2,000 off site helping do this before. They don't even need to get on site, so we don't have to worry about those logistics. Uh, so you're going to see those popping up all out. Just like Linda said with the last blazing or the other facility or some of the uh, off-site works, it's going to be a big push, not just to push it out to Wisconsin, but because we really can't afford to have that many people on site getting on top of each other and making this inefficient. So when we get the bids in, one of the first things we're going to do is look, do they have the Wisconsin first plan? And what is their plan? How many companies are local? What is their workforce local? How many of those are minority businesses? Do they have the pricing breakdown? Uh, do they have the resources and schedules? Do they have the workforce and cash flow? Let's talk about how important that is. We really have to understand on a week to week, on a day to day basis, how many people we're expecting on site. And then it's going to have the terms and conditions. We're going to fill out a form. And we looked at this the last several days with Boston reviewed it last night. It includes all the things that are required. It's got a line here that says, yes, it's there, or no, it's not, or yes, I'm doing that, or no, I'm not. And anywhere that is a requirement and these the contractor submits no, probably the first thing we're going to do, and we did this a few times, what do you really mean? Is there something about the wording? Do you want to say no, or are you really saying, no, you don't plan to do this? And depending on what it is, it may be okay to say no, but there's some things like the inclusion plan, say, 
provide an inclusion plan, and if they say no, then that's not a responsibility. So you don't need to go any further. You don't even look at the price. You have to be responsive <coughs> to be an eligible bidder. But all that's going to be clear. It's going to be evident when you go in the software and you enter those nodes, it's going to come up as red and ask you, are you really sure this is right? And again, when we go to our clarifications, if we have any questions about this understanding, we can go back and clarify what we also have. And this is the, the form we actually put together and presented to Boston last night with the first bid. So what we did is we have a cover letter. And it was really about this thing. It was probably several hundred pages that included all the bids from all the bidders. It included all their alternates. It included our evaluation. It included the adjustments made after discussion. And it included the final price in our recommendation. So we put the recommendation on front here, summarized the bids. Here's all the bidders. Here's their price. Here's their alternates. Depending on taking the alternate or not, this is the final price. This is who we recommend. Here's why we recommend them. Here's how they perform, which constant first. We actually include that in the evaluation. So everything being equal, which constant first is going to be a different chair. Um, how you include uh, employees and companies. And then we say, do you agree with our recommendation? And they say, yep, we're good with that. Or no, go clarify this one thing or find out more about this alternate. Or I prefer this other contract for these reasons. The point is, we, as MW Deal Bain, go through and do all the analysis and make the recommendation, but it's not our decision. It's Boscon's decision to decide who to award to. Once they sign this, then we go off and put the subcontracts in place on our paper. But they're the ones who approve it. As far as terms and, and conditions, uh, there's obviously the Wisconsin First Goals that uh, Linda reviewed with everyone. Uh, the payment terms are 30 day payment terms, which is pretty standard. Uh, the nice thing that we're doing here is for the, the companies out there that really can't wait 30 days, we're all offering twice a month. So you can actually submit an invoice on the 1st and on the 15th. Both of those are 30-day invoices, but you have two checks coming in. You're not having to wait 30 days in between your effort to put in your next invoice. Um, as far as uh, purchases of real property and improvements, there are some tax uh, incentives that are no tax on local procurement of material equipment. So there'll be a line in the bid that says, you know, what do you think you're going to spend as far as these type of items and it'll be specific for what they are, and then estimate the tax savings based on what's exempted. And then you're going to see very uh, standard terms and conditions like you would in uh, most contracts. A little bit more on the release. So we came out with the uh, ground moving site development saying we're to make more on that um, tonight or tomorrow. Uh, the next thing you're going to see out is we included some very temporary stuff. So we have a couple of offices that were included in this first bid that really we have a generator for. We only have power. So we're putting a generator out there that report bodies. But eventually we have to get something a little more uh, robust than that. So we'll either put a slab on grade, um, you know, steel structure, roof building for temp office, or we'll roll out a more more uh, semi-permanent offices with actual temp water, temp power instead of generator. All those packages will be coming out uh, here in Q2, Q3. We'll come out with more site utilities and roadways for Q3 and Q4 this year. Uh, and as I mentioned earlier, since we're starting foundations in concrete um, in Q1 next year, we're probably going to start identifying some all the equipment and material that we want to have we want to place orders for late this year. So those will be the first uh, non-horizontal type orders in place. Um, although I still talk to them, there may be some small facilities that they'll put on site this year. I'm just not sure this them. We're still uh, discussing that one. So for MEP again, very late this year, more likely Q1 next year before you start seeing the, the interior uh, structure uh, part piece. Thank you, Alan. Uh, uh, as you all can see, we have uh, been making our way around the state. Our commitment is and has been from the very beginning to be able to give you a thorough review of uh, where things stand as of now. Uh, we hope that we continue to maintain our energy level uh, just as we started out in Sturdivant with uh, 500 of our peers 
in the room. Uh, last week uh, we had four sessions and uh, three, six, probably had 750 um, business leaders like yourselves last week. And so uh, we continue to bring the message that there are opportunities and that we hope that you will continue to join with us, partner with us. Uh, one of our colleagues in the back with our, within the carpenters trade, I believe this is session number four. Session number three, we're going to give you one extra, and we appreciate it, and, you, and, and that you brought a colleague with you. And so we ask you that if you have others in your network that may be in the Eau Claire area, uh, bring them up and have them stop and see us this afternoon, certainly if there may be some partnering opportunities. Uh, we want to make sure that we're finishing strong both this morning and then this afternoon. Uh, just in terms of another opportunity, uh, Yella talked about uh, the resources from a workforce standpoint. There is another resource fair that is planned, uh, just popped in our inbox, Thursday, May 3rd. Uh, I'll, I'll share this info, but just at a high level, it will be at the um, uh, Wisconsin State Fairgrounds, uh, Wisconsin State Fair Park Exposition Center, just off of Interstate 94 in West Allis, where we will have a similar resource fair. So if you know of those that may be interested in connecting into this process, certainly uh, there will be many resources that are available for individuals that are looking to connect both in the skilled trades and other associated uh, opportunities. Again, it's next Thursday, May 3rd. 10.30 to 11 will be dedicated to uh, veterans. Um, we want to thank uh, any of you that are in the room for your military service. So 10.30 to 11 will be dedicated for veterans. And then from 11 uh, till 2 p.m., the general public is uh, welcome to join in. Get any resources that may be necessary, any licensure needs, uh, any um, requirements that may be needed. Uh, though there may be those that are in, in the middle of their apprenticeship or various resources, driver's license recovery, other uh, areas of training and development. Again, we are, are connected with about 300 residents uh, back on March 23rd, 24th uh, in Racine County. This is another opportunity, again, in Milwaukee at the State Fair Park Exposition Center on Thursday, May 3rd. Uh, on wisconsinvalley.wi.gov, uh, there's likely a post for that. Now, here's some information and other resources we want to make available to you. As you mentioned, wisconsinvalley.wi.gov, we would recommend that you bookmark this site uh, visit and visit it often again for additional updates like we just learned on the resource fair. The Wisconsin Valley, uh, the Wisconsin Valley News, that newsletter that's published uh, every two weeks. The next issue will come out this Friday, the 26th. Again, you'll see some updates there as we make bid announcements. As we issue uh, pre-bid meetings or bid alerts will be posted there. Uh, the general information sessions, thank you for those that registered. Uh, you likely visited that site so that we can, out of respect for our hosts, know who to expect. We'll use a similar platform as other information sessions are planned as we begin to move um, uh, into the organized and disciplined process with releasing those packages. Again, you'll note right here uh, at the top, in order to ensure a fair and open process, everyone is asked to follow that process. Uh, we appreciate those of you that have connected with us and maybe reached out to us uh, in between time as we look to engage this, but uh, we want to make sure that we're being transparent and fair. So if we're not able to be responsive with a meeting request or for you to do a lunch and learn with our teams, please know that we are looking to ensure that everyone has the same baseline information, that we will issue the bid alerts, that you will follow the process for downloading the documents, signing the mutual non-disclosure agreements. Again, this allows us to be consistent in the way that we deliver this information to the marketplace, and we'll do our best to uh, be available to you, but we do ask that you follow the process.
foxcon-construction.gilbaneco.com, uh, the dedicated site that will allow you to provide us some baseline information, data on your company. So by a show of hands, uh, uh, some of you raised your hand earlier, uh, but if you focus within the construction trades, uh, how many in the room have registered with us at foxcon-construction.gilbaneco.com? All right, uh, those others that are in the room, you can <coughs> register right here from your smartphone, your iPad, your laptop, your desktop, the person in your office, you could do it. Uh, we do ask for that baseline information. I, uh, you may, uh, I'll show you the site shortly, the name of your company, the states where you operate. We have 336 different core competencies. They're listed in alpha order. Uh, with a complimentary um, NACE code. And if by chance in those 336 we miss your area of expertise, we do have a text box where you can enter that information. This allows us to begin to extract those core competencies and target uh, information. We commit to you that if you register here with us, you will uh, become a part of our community and receive updates uh, you can review those updates, whether or not they apply to your specific business. You may know those in your network that it may apply to. So uh, when we begin to roll out the logistics and some of the other uh, bid releases later this year and on into next year, if it doesn't apply for you, then share it with a colleague. Uh, we do encourage them to give us this baseline information. We want to know your last three projects, an average size of your contract, what's your sweet spot? Uh, what would you, uh, do you perform, uh, provide materials and labor or labor only? If you're a professional services firm, again, that information only goes to help us understand best where your uh, company may fit in the scenario uh, in the overall uh, vertical construction, area one, phase one. So with that, I'm just going to pause for a moment and while I switch over, I'm going to ask my team, do we have other uh, nuggets that we want to share um, before we move to the next phase of our Q&A. Alan, y'all? I'm sure there are questions that come up us. Okay, all right. So here is the wiscon.wi.gov site that, um, uh, that we mentioned. Uh, again, bookmark this site. And no, we don't want to enjoy the app. So we'll try to close that again. You can learn about construction. Um, there's, I uh, want to talk about some of the videos that are posted. Yeah, yeah. Um, so just um, not to take up too much time because I want to make sure that we have enough time for Q&A. Um, but there are some videos on the site too. Um, there's a series, and I'm not exactly off channel, but that's, uh, that's just a general video. But there is a series that was put together by Fox uh, News, the local station down in the Milwaukee area. Um, they went out to the Osaka plant, uh, Foxconn, as well as their China plant, and have a really great overview video of just how the manufacturing process works. And they did a really good job of comparing what is there in Osaka and what's intended to be built in China compared to what's going to be happening down in Pleasant. Uh, so it's a really uh, good overview of um, uh, not only how Foxconn's production process works, um, but just what we should be expecting um, here versus what they have already in other countries. Thank you. This is the uh, information around the science and technology part. Again, you'll see the links here, the public uh, construction. Uh, you can register with your email address for updates there. Here's where the uh, presentation is posted for today to have access to those links. And uh, this is the location within the site where the uh, bid releases will be uh, posted. Again, a mutual uh, non-disclosure agreement is required to have access to the documents. Supply chain marketplace that uh, Yella mentioned earlier, it's all on that site. And here is um, the registration site again uh, the information uh, available to us about your business, uh, where you do work, uh, pretty straightforward, uh, and some standard terms and conditions that will allow us then to make this information available. Our client has a number of 
um, construction uh, activities that may be going on over the course of this program. They recently uh, purchased a site, the 611 building on Wisconsin Avenue. Uh, we will certainly make your information available to them as they uh, look to uh, do some interior fit out and uh, other activities around their construction outside of Area 1, Phase 1. So these are the resources that uh, are available to you. And uh, uh, from that standpoint, this will bring our formal presentation to a close. And um, just again, we want to make sure that we are here and uh, answering and addressing any questions. So what we ask that you do is just give us a chance to work through the room. I know, Alan, you've got, there's a young lady, I believe, that's waiting. She's still here, um, yeah. the representative. And so uh, uh, we will have some time for that. We want to take that right quick while we uh, just reset. So I want to just understand what we have in the room. Uh, anyone that focuses on the public infrastructure side. And uh, have you looked at any of the uh, documents and information, and did you find it helpful? Yep, all that. Okay, I think a lot of that work is going to start rolling in May, and uh, a lot of mobilization efforts are happening around that. We hope that was helpful. And we've got some professional services partners in the room. Okay, and uh, Dale, you focus on the risk management side, so we want to understand a little bit more about what your needs and expectations are. And uh, so for the core and shell, who do we have? All right, and then we have MEP. So, so there were several of you that did not raise your hands. So can you give us a sense of the trades that you focus on? Well, for me, I work for propane suppliers, so we're involved in the construction. So okay. Kind of parts of everything. Could be across much of that. Uh-huh. Others? So do we have any businesses that hold a uh, target business certification? Where you are certified as minority-owned, woman-owned, veteran-owned? And what's your focus? Consultant engineer, simple site, construction okay. management, uh, site design. Okay. 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 All right. All right. And others, just again, um, your area. Any non-construction related partners in the room? Okay, want to learn more? All right, and hopefully we've been able to provide you with some context. And uh, so any interest around uh, some of the prefabrication, uh, uh, such an interesting concept around that, being able to uh, provide what will be needed uh, for the opportunity. All right, so, so we will do our best to address questions Alan may be able to address some more of the technical questions as he returns. So, do we have any questions in the room? All right. Regarding both the Wisconsin Valley website supply chain and the Bill Bain Company's vendor page, are those lists downloadable as we will be supplying not only you directly or Foxconn directly, but we would be supplying other suppliers that are supplying you? So a contact list would be handy instead of having to go in and finding it in the website, you can just download it and the contact list. On the supply chain uh, side, um, you can't download the complete list of all 1,500, but the way that the data base is set up is directly, you can search by category, yeah. and you can you find... Yeah, click on each one separately, yeah. go into each contact separately. Mm -hmm. but unfortunately, we haven't... Um, turned it into something that we um, will have to explore that um, and consider what kinds of uses it's available because there's risk that if someone can download everything, they can start soliciting um, folks. And it so, just takes time to download know, everything anyway. That's, that's not available on the Sure, and, 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 and very similar. We are, uh, when you share your information with us, we try to be respectful and set some parameters around the uh, way the information is used. Uh, it would be consistent in that. So uh, our recommendation uh, is on two fronts. So your existing customer base, if you're a supplier, 
Uh, you are best um, um, known of who those suppliers are that you work with. Begin to engage them in conversation. Are you looking at some of the work that's coming? Did you attend an information session? I'm available. Um, assuming you're a Wisconsin-based company, uh, we'd like to be able to provide our services and resources so you begin your advanced marketing so that they uh, uh, can certainly consider you as a part of the Wisconsin First Economic Inclusion Plan. Again, begin to do that work early and often. Uh, attend the pre-bid meetings. Uh, we had probably half of the companies that attended the pre-bid session with us on the MassX. On the first bid release, uh, we're suppliers. So again, across that footprint, as we gather a rhythm, uh, we'll begin to pick it up from that standpoint. But uh, at this point, we will not have the information downloadable and searchable. There will be some continued work that you would need to do as a supplier uh, to be able to identify those primes. We'll work with you as much as we can without um, um, violating the agreements that we have established uh, in terms of sharing of information. The, the, the other thing to remember is supply chain marketplaces, there, there are, your market is looking for you through the supply chain marketplace. It's not necessarily a, a, a platform for you can broadcast out everything you do, but when people are looking for what you do, they will come to the supply chain marketplace and target you and your industry and your business. The, the other important thing too is when they come through this, they get the entire state. Supply chain? For supply chain, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. You come to the Synergy website, you'll get just the Synergy County what supply chain yeah. companies are in there. You go to New North, and you get just that. You know, the Lockheed 7, you get just that. You can have that. The entire state can do this. But if you, if you want to hone down, or if you want to increase your exposure in a regional area, go to the local regional economic mm -hmm. development organization, put the supply chain on that. Uh, yeah, I think the greatest opportunity is people finding you, not you finding you. Any other questions? I got a question. Oh. <laughs> the uh, developer's agreement that Foxconn has, you mentioned that there was two of them. Okay, um, I guess my question is two parts. One, the development goals you've got for contracting and for labor um, are set. Are those goals written into that into that developer's agreement, both of those? And number two, are there any contractual penalties for non performance? So uh, it's a two-part question. I will do my best to give you uh, the response as I know it. So the answer is no. The Wisconsin First Commitments uh, are not a part of the published development agreements. Um, our company, Gilbane and the W, our joint venture, together with our client, we have established economic inclusion goals to ensure that there is inclusion within area one, phase one. Um, uh, so it is a part of our agreement that we include in, in terms of the commitments within the agreements that we hold with the companies that are bidding to us and working with us. There is the expectation that your inclusion plan that is submitted with your bid will be executed based on what you have present what has been presented to us best and good faith efforts that you are uh, executing the contracts that have been um, uh, uh, submitted as a part of that plan. We will require monthly reporting in terms of how the spin down happens with the companies that are a part of that plan, along with final payment agreements, which is a standard approach that we take across all of our projects. So an inclusion plan up front, demonstration through executed subcontracts, Monthly utilization and final payment at the end is our uh, effort from a um, Gilbane and the W Group standpoint that we report back to our client. Area one, phase one. And there's no penalty for non-performance. There is no penalty for non-performance. We would expect that you would have the type of relationship with your partners that you're entering into agreements with that you would be um, you well, I'm not referring to my contract obligation. Right. I'm talking about Foxconn's obligation to their development agreement. So there is no visibility of these commitments in the development agreements with um, with the state or with the village of Mount Pleasant. And those agreements are available online if you'd like to look at them. Um, they do spell out the penalties as far as the total number of job commitments and the 
what is expected from the report and structure. But the agreement doesn't go down into detail as far as reflecting these percentages. Um, but this is where you know it's incumbent on us uh, to consider if we're expecting Foxconn to commit to 13,000 um, jobs, if those 13,000 jobs are to Wisconsin residents, and how we make sure that we skill our workforce to be available <coughs> to support Foxconn is what we're working on. So it's just as much, um, you know, from them it's a commitment because of the tax incentives and the credits, or from us it's a commitment to, we got to figure out what those training programs are, we got to figure out what and how we pull in the workforce so that um, all 13,000 are here in this house. And those are uh, operational jobs post-construction. These commitments are representative of opportunities within Area 1, Phase 1, that Gil Bank and the W Group will be administering as a part of our agreement uh, with our client. Okay. Our, our subcontractors required to bond back to Gil Bain or is it some non-bonded job? I'm going to let Here. Alan address that. Here. Sure. The performance and payment bond. There we go. So, why don't you give that question? Um, uh, Dale has a question. Uh, <laughs> are subcontractors required to bond back to the, the, the GC uh, for lower tier? Uh, is it a bonded, bonded job? Um, it, 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 it'll be based on risk, uh, so it's not an automatic requirement. So, you make the determination by the Questions? Yes, the ball. They were very well. They weren't very happy. <laughs> well, well, yes. Can you speak to the overall project schedule in terms of the area one, phase one, in terms of you know when they want to have panels coming? Um, oh, panels that? coming out. Yeah. Um, what they've been and all of this is not by one. So I'm going to talk about the discussions with them. Um, so we have talked about the, it's about a two-year process, our construction process, to get the facilities built, get all the utilities in, have their equipment. We'll talk a little bit about, you know, they have some very specialized equipment that, that does the actual maintenance. And, and this is something that there's, there might be two places in the U.S. to manufacture this, but a lot of it actually comes from Asia, and that's just the only place it's made. Um, because there's not that many TV manufacturing facilities required. Um, it's kind of like, I, I came from Intel, so I worked at Intel Corporation, made computer chips for uh, 15 years before I came to uh, MW. Uh, and what we did, a lot of our equipment, just like yours, is uh, very specialized. So when we finish the facility, we put in the utility support equipment, and some of this equipment is as big as a tennis court. It's not, you know, take this room, it's quite size to bring the equipment itself. So we, we move it in. We set it down and then we start putting all the utilities, power to it, and the water, and everything else. That's probably about 24 to 30 months out from the time we start doing the validation. So, after about six months of installing their manufacturing equipment, we can see the products coming out. Now, before that, they can actually start shipping in components and doing assembly on that site in their assembly building ahead of all the actual production. Of. So that's why I say you could see product come out in a much shorter time frame than we get the facility ready for the full loop. So we could see product come out within 18 months. When we get the assembly facility done, they start trucking in components uh, from overseas in the U.S. and putting them together and shipping them out there well ahead of the rest of the facility. Are you looking to try and a second tier inclusion like that we're providing like <coughs> steel to one of these gentlemen that are kind of contract with Gil Bay versus directly with the firm, inclusive firm, directly Gil Bay, like second tier to, to one of the subs. That, can they give credit for that? Yeah, they do, absolutely. Uh, in fact, the, the proposals that we received from Earth Moving, some of those show two, three tiers now. So the subs, two subs. And yes, we take all of that into account. If there's a small business, minority business that's part of that team that gets that 
and that larger team just kind of. Other questions? Other questions? So we really appreciate you guys coming out, um, doing these sessions. It was frustrating for so long to not be able to respond to all the questions, to not be able to respond to the rumors of what people say, said was happening out there. We knew were true, but we couldn't really say anything. So uh, when we got the final okay to start putting together these sessions and giving everybody visibility of what's really happening, uh, that's helped a lot. And if you guys come and get information and you go out and talk to your friends and family, they're going to get the information. And, and the clear message is, we're going through a very formal process. There's opportunity for everyone. It hasn't been behind the black curtain. People have been given work and dedicated, and they already know they want to test out what's happening. This is going to be a transparent and support process. And everybody's going to have an opportunity to engage with they would like to engage. Yep. Thank you. Thank you all very much. Have a great rest of your day.